Hello, YouTube. This Hold is on. part three oh. of my response to Thunderbolt 94's video. Stop. This part... Um, Wait, what's that? Stop. <laughs> <laughs> Fallacy already. <laughs> I'm, jo I'm joking, okay? okay. Do me a favor. Do me a favor. S start that from the beginning. Okay, that's fine. Because it was only a few okay. seconds in. That's fine. Trust me, we'll be this is part three of my response to Thunderbolt 94's video. This part, um, I have a big problem with, mainly because it almost seems like you forgot the last two videos I made. Either that or you didn't get to see them. Uh, I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt and assume that you simply forgot. I clarified what I meant by uh, Domain of Rationality before. It was a failure of mine to articulate the point. Now you're straw manning me. Let's stop, go. stop, stop. Wait, what was that? That was that was fine. Well, I'd, I'd like to, uh, if we have time, um, now, I'd like to make a explain to us. I'm sorry, what? can you repeat that? Can you repeat that? I'm sorry. Yeah, no problem. Um, what, I, what I said was, I, I'd like you to explain to us, um, and specifically to me, because I've, I've never really followed uh, Esplin, I've seen these three videos quickly, but when he said the um, domain of rationality, he said he didn't explain himself enough, now he did, okay. and what does he mean, and, and okay. how do you believe you are strawmanning him, or how does he perceive your okay. position to be strawmanning him? Okay, basically, when he in in the in the last video that I I was responding to to, he's he's he made the, he started he admitted that. Sorry, let me repeat myself. But my, I'm having a brain fried right at the moment. So he wanted to say that he was going to avoid using the term domain of rationality because he wanted to make the argument that in the particular instance and in his case the theist atheist debate. He's saying that the methods they are coming to the conclusion are rational, while theist methods are not rational because many of their arguments are not valid. And I was trying to make the point that, yes, I acknowledge that you no longer hold to this, but but I wanted to clarify what I was talking about and how I perceive um, how, many, how many atheists like Esplin were using the so-called domain of rationality argument. Does that make sense? Does uh, yeah, continue. I mean, if no one has anything else to say, that that was. Uh, I just wish some clarification. Okay, that's fine. Right, let me continue. Uh, covering more about your understanding of rationality. Now, I know you say in the video that you're going to stop using the term the domain of rationality. Yes, I'm. I stopped using that term. Because of this exact problem. Because of people thinking that I'm saying that all atheists are rational. That they're rational because they're atheists. Or that they're atheists because they're rational. That's not what I was saying. I clarified it. Stop. My what was that? The, the, no, that, that's exactly what he said in the first video. That atheists yeah. hold the domain of rationality. Yeah, which seems I mean, to and I know that. Atheists are rational. He's making a complete fucking backpedal at this point. Yeah, and I also need to mention that he, he uh, but maybe he'll, he'll go on to that, I can remember uh, later on, but uh, he simply says, well, okay, um, uh, to be an atheist is not equivalent to being rational. That That's what he's saying. But is he saying that to be a theist is no longer to be uh, irrational, by definition. Last night he said that we that he's saying he's talking about the methods they use, which I'll, I'll clarify again. He says that the methods that they, as an atheist, are coming to the conclusion are rational, while the, while theist methods are not rational because many of their arguments are not valid. That's what he said. That's just making uh, the question. question. Yeah, it's, it's like, how do you know? I mean, the God hypothesis uh, 
I, I don't mean that to be offensive to any of the theists no, no, in the room, so... We're not good I, I, I genuinely apologize. We, we, we uh, might not the, agree the, with the answer to, Like, the answer to the, the question of whether God exists or not is an untestable hypothesis. So when somebody uses their rationality to come to a conclusion on that, um, or speaking in scientific terms, they come up with their own particular hypothesis as to what the outcome is. How can you know if somebody's method are actually rational or irrational. I, I also want to bring something else up, as well as the fact that there are many atheists as well as theists who will arrive at that conclusion based on emotional uh, reasoning. Yes. Alright, I think we should continue. Uh, okay. I'll clarify in this video a little later. I want to cover this one more time so, so you understand where I'm coming from. I understand where you're coming from. I even agree with what you're saying. You don't understand where I'm coming from, or you choose not to understand it, or you're ignoring it. When you say, when you say something along the lines that atheists have the domain of rationality, that does not determine whether you are right. I agree. You're absolutely right. I never claimed it did. Let's say you have two people. One person is a normal person who's really good at math. You give them both two incredibly complicated math problems. One of them uses logic, his mathematic skills, and arguably rationality to weed out the less likely answers in a multiple choice question. Uh, let's say he has five choices, all very similar. He weeds out all the wrong ones, but of the two that are one number off, he chooses the wrong one simply because he's not paying attention. He's rational in his decision, but in that particular instance, he was off by one number. The guy next to him is a schizophrenic who hears voices. Now, this guy saw the answer he chose. He doesn't know he saw it, because as he was twitching, he happened to see it. His brain picked up on that. Um, right before he was going to pick the same answer, a voice in his head told him, no, it's not C, it's B. He gets it right. Now, does the fact that the first guy was rational make him right? Yeah. Um, uh, it's no, it doesn't. He's wrong. What was that, Brendan? Okay, seems to me, and maybe I got this term wrong, but it just seems to me like he's begging the question. He's, uh, he's just putting, he's putting um, rationality versus, I guess you could say, uh, religious thought in the, in a, in, in a, uh, what you call, he's comparing it to somebody being crazy. I mean, that, that yeah, seems to be more like just making fun of the whole issue than really giving a valid rational explanation. Well, yeah, he's, 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 he's the asking question. the question about warrants of belief. Yeah. Um, what do we come to know that... things that we know by a sound way, like Elvin Plantinga argues uh, in his book Warrants of Christian Belief. Uh, he, uh, he argues that, you know, I could believe that um, 4 plus 3 um, is 7 because I fell on the ground with my head on a rock. And then I just came to the conclusion four plus uh, plus three is seven. Uh, that that's a conclusion, but that's not a rational way, or that's not a, a a good way to come to that conclusion. So one is not warranted to believe it. And um, what he, he seems to be saying here is that people who have religious beliefs or uh, believe in Christianity, in this example, uh, in this example with Jacob, uh, come to that conclusion uh, through uh, an unwarranted way. Um, well, my question is, um, how does Jacob come to the... That's my cat. <laughs> just, just, just think of the one that comes with the inverse of this. The man that uh, just happens to get it wrong on all other questions, he gets it right. Can he still considered rational even though he didn't get it right and his, his methoding in that respect was flawed and yet he's still considered rational? Rational, but it, before he said theist are irrational because they may have tried to apply logic, but they get it wrong. So which is it? Are you considered rational 
when you apply mm-hmm. inferences and they're flawed, or if you get it right. I mean, yeah. he's even he's with something that, it's the, it's that in them everywhere. Because he's saying like uh, the religious people who are now just to schizophrenia, but like he's an he like that was something that I was going to say. And that's a good point. Is how like um, the jump of William A. Craig uses like deductive uh, reasoning. Which is exactly analogous to his example of, say, the mathematician using like math, like logic and mathematical skills to. So therefore, it's basically well, what's the word? Um, category error. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, and he also seems to say, uh, well, uh, the, the mathematician uses his knowledge of math, he uses logic, and arguably rationality. Well, I consider logic to be a part of rationality. Rationality, mm-hmm. action. I believe logic to be one of the fundamental uh, um, uh, things within rationality. So, what is rationality? When he says rationality, what does he mean? He seems to be using it in a, a point different way. Uh, this is a point that a number of people think. Um, such as Brandon has made that he doesn't well, he, 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 he doesn't define his terms and he doesn't seem to understand his terms either right. awkward silence alright you want me to continue or does anyone want to say one last point uh, I got well, nothing okay. uh, I agree with everything that was said okay uh, I just wanted to finish on the point of warranted right. belief is uh, when he uh, says or oh, tries to compare people of religious uh, positions to be schizophrenic, he he has to show that you, Jacob, as he's talking about, uh, that you come to the conclusion that the Christian God exists by way of uh, 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 something which makes it unwarranted for you to believe it. And it seems that he's saying you're not using rationality. And I I believe that uh, probably 99% of uh, the people that watch your videos that are intellectually honest um, can see that you use, at least insofar as what you claim, you use rationality. So uh, the burden is on him to show that uh, you are unwarranted to believe what you believe. Right, I completely agree with you there. As well I as do have something to say with like that. The problem oh, is... I do want to say something as well. Um, is also the fact that, you know, he, he might also... Just maybe as a little footnote, but he might also have to prove that you know you, you come to these conclusions based on the fact that you hear a little voice in your head. Now burn them all! <laughs> burn them all! <laughs> <laughs> I, I think Good that. <laughs> well, I think that if you were to call him out on that, though, he would probably say something like, "Oh, I was only being figurative." Yeah. Good. Yeah, or he will say, well, I have nothing to prove. But then he can't say that people who are yeah, religious uh, are schizophrenic. Uh, then he just ha- simply has to say, well, I'm ignorant of uh, uh, your position, and I can't say anything about it. Right. Um, I think we should move on. I just think we've spent enough on this point. So all we'll end up to saying, oh, you're misrepresenting me, which seems to be one of his key uh, defenses. All right. We're going to continue now. But does the fact that the other guy happened to guess the right answer make him not a completely irrational person in those circumstances? That is, that's that is to say, in those in that specific instance. Let's say when he's on his medicine, he's perfectly fine and he's perfectly rational. Irrelevant in that particular instance, even if he's right, the methods by which he arrived at his conclusion are fundamentally flawed. So, yeah, I agree with you. In one of your previous videos, EvoGen videos made a very, very good point. This is why I mentioned you, man. Address awesome. Have to address this if you're going to claim that atheists are so somehow more rational than theists. I'm going to repeat what he said. He says this, but how do you know which one is being rational? Because you're just stating that one of them is rational and the other isn't, and it really has nothing to do with how well constructed or sound their arguments are. It's based on who's making which arguments. It's called a genetic fallacy. 
atheists aren't above fallacious reasoning. You never address that. You, you have been committing a genetic fallacy. Just because someone is an atheist, or just because someone disbelieves in God, that doesn't automatically mean they have the domain of rationality, as you used to call it. It does not mean that just because someone believes in a different way of gaining knowledge about, about the world, it does not mean they are less rational because they believe in something that is supernatural. That is not how rationality w w works. Rationality is not a, a atheist-specific thing. It is a tool used by humanity to reach towards conclusions. You know, I did respond to this. I haven't made the genetic fallacy. Not once. I did not say all well, atheists are rational. I did not say they are immune to fallacious arguments. I said in this particular instance, the methods by which they are coming to their conclusions all right, all right, are... That is the genetic fallacy. <laughs> and he's yeah. not telling the truth. He did say atheists are, rat uh, are, 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 are rational, basically. Okay, yeah, I'm asserting that, that they are. I mean, who says who says that 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 you're in the right here? He's just a. Not to, men, not to mention just, the fact that, like, a, not to mention the fact that you know, atheists, some atheists do come to these conclusions based on emotional reasoning. Mm -hmm. It's just the fact that he is using the uh, genetic fallacy. The genetic fallacy is when you try to argue that someone came to the. It's basically it attacks how they came to the conclusion. Um, uh, is it, is this that he, oh, I just, I'm just uh, kind of like, uh, a bit nonplussed how, how, how he doesn't seem to realize that he's still making the genetic fallacy. He when also he say, never actually addressed it. That was bullshit. He pretty much yeah. made another genetic fallacy, and then when I was like, okay, it's, that doesn't really answer my question, and that still doesn't avoid the fact that you made a genetic fallacy, he's like, uh, I'll get back to you on that. Okay. That's a lie. Uh huh. Right. And we, we could continue then. Yeah. <laughs> Unless anyone has anyone, anything else to say. Yeah, I'll probably say Elf this right now. Elf. For anyone who's listening to this, um, the Dutch philosopher has now left. Okay. That's fine. He can. Right. Okay. We'll screw it. More fun for us. <laughs> we'll continue. <laughs> All atheists? No, I'm sure some atheists just don't give a damn. Again, deja vu, I said this in another video to you. Either you did not watch that video, or you do not care. I clarify this. I'm not saying all atheists are rational. I'm not saying all god bothers are irrational. What I'm saying is that the methods by which you're attaining your conclusion, the methods that are getting you from point A to point B are fallacious. Ergo, in this particular instance, we are in the sphere of rationality, and you are in the sphere of irrationality. Not because of the oh, been, conclusion that you reach. It looks like he's something. moving the goalposts. Yeah, he's stringing together a series of words in a way that doesn't make any rational or coherent sense. He, he, he's just kind of assuming the that he's in the right, which is in assuming the that as, Jacob is yeah. in the wrong. Which yeah, is just he's making like, the question as to whether you know Jacob, uh, Jacob's you know reasoning is how to, he reaches that conclusion is fallacious. He keeps he keeps it doesn't seem to understand. It's just, I can't get a sense of what he's actually arguing, because he keeps jumping from, oh, I'm not saying this, well, I'm saying this, when they seem to be mutually, well, contradictory well, terms. Like, he's well, like, oh, I'm not saying that, you know, all, all atheists uh, are rational, but I am saying that we do have that all atheists, uh, that I, atheists have the domain I, of rationality. Yeah. How, 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 how does that like not guilty to proven innocent. I mean, Jacob, you're wrong until you can prove uh, to me. I'm saying you're. I'm gonna assert you're fallacious. You're guilty till proven innocent. Right, because yeah. I mean, but, because here he's trying to say that the methodology that atheists use to reach their conclusion that God doesn't exist is not is not as fallacious as say theists who come to the who use the same methodology to come to the conclusion that God exists. So, 
if we're if atheists and theists are using the same philosophical methodology to reach their conclusions, then how does that prove that one is more rational than the other? Right. And he doesn't really get into the methodology. Yeah, exactly. I mean, in, in addition to this just being a bare assertion, uh, I really yeah. think that it's nothing more than just an ad hom. You know, it's just I'm going to label your 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 methodology as illogical, irrational, and that's the end of it. And don't explain it. Using okay. the insult as the argument. Yeah. Right. Okay, we're gonna get he, never wants, he never wants it, you know, he doesn't give specific examples of Jacob's methodology at all. This is an argument from analogy. He's like, well, he's just like, well, this, this you give an analogy and then asserts, and then just barely asserts that that's what Jacob's doing. Like, um, uh, that's a non. Uh, so, how does that follow? <laughs> uh huh. Right, let's continue then. Okay. Hold on. It reached, but because of the methods with. Through which you reach that conclusion. Your methods are fallacious, irrational, and wrong. All three of those things are separate things. They're not contingent on each other, but they all apply in this case. No, I was not making the genetic fallacy. Yes, I did respond to him. Fuck, no, you didn't. <laughs> they apply how? Okay. Wait, what was that, Chris? And they're not contingent upon one another? <laughs> well, he said three different things about Jake's reasoning, and he did not illustrate how these things applied to his reasoning. He just said that they did. For his conclusion to be wrong, your methodology has to be flawed. Ergo, they are contingent upon one another. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if anyone has any other points. Ergo. Does anyone have any other points? Me, concordantly. All right. If anyone has any other points, we're going to move on. All right. Move on. All right. Christians <coughs> define faith, and Christians rightfully have defined faith as belief, faith based on knowledge. And I'm saying, no, you haven't. That's how you're doing it in this argument. Christian faith is faith based on revealed knowledge. Revealed knowledge is knowledge that is privy to you or the people whose testimony you're accepting and nobody else. You seem to have a big problem with that because you continually claim that faith is not based on knowledge. That isn't the point. When Christians believe that faith is based on knowledge, they are based they are they are saying that their faith is based on based on the current data such as scripture, such as history, testimony, and so on and so on. That is what they would consider knowledge. And based on that knowledge, they would say they would put their faith on that as being reliable. And I'm telling you, you're wrong whether you consider that knowledge or not. It isn't. It's revealed knowledge. It Pause. is knowledge. What was that? The, the where when he starts going off like, but it's not. I just got one thing to say, to quote the big Lebowski. Well, that's just like your opinion, man. Well, it, it, it's uh, all based on what your definition of evidence is. Evidence is yeah. easily interchangeable with justification. And that is a justification. You may think it's a poor one, but that is a justification. So right. It goes more into just, it's not just I, I this... There's this hearsay stuff, and I'm just going to uh, put my faith in authority. And the, no, no, revealed knowledge has to do with personal experience at all. Right. I mean, uh, also, if, if, right. also, how this, is like how is scripture and stuff? How is that on you know revealed knowledge? <laughs> yeah, I think he's making a what's, an, he's, uh, what's the word? Uh, oh, it's a fault, faulty analogy because um, scripture. Oh isn't purely revelational. It's not like... I mean, something that would be purely revelational would be something like Gnosticism, where they believe in, like, some special revealed knowledge that's only accessible to the, um, to the initiated. Whereas in... Whereas scripture is something that's free... is, like, readily available to be scrutinized. As, as a matter of fact, there are... As a matter of fact, there are multiple scriptures that refer to, uh, to the, uh, you know, the, the truth of, of God's word being evident to all. 
so. Well, another point See, also it's... is that uh, lo- evidence is just another is just a part of, of logos. So, if if in, in, in Christian understanding, and he he's not taking into account of ethos, and many Christians would say, okay, we believe that this that the claims of Christianity are true. Taking into account the, the, the... Wait, 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 let me finish my point real quick, then I'll let you go. Uh, many Christians would say, we believe that the logos of Christianity is true because we, because the people who are making the claims that, uh, that Christianity is true because they have very strong ethos regarding these claims. And when people are making, like, like, like say, let's, I'll give you a couple of examples. Let's say, like, uh, the, the, the apostles, church fathers, so on, so on. Like, th- th- these are part of, like, testimony, documents, etc., the Christians are basing their trust on these documents because these are evidence that are backed up by strong ethos of the people who are claiming that these documents are reliable. And don't forget, right. Christian, you also have the aspect of personal revelation, what Christians uh, normally refer to as witness of the Holy Spirit. This right. isn't just accepting somebody's authority. Right, that's a good point, too. Uh, so, something else, I think. Some leads to get it, uh, is it? Uh, yeah. Okay. Oh, so I'm sorry, Greek. Basically, the word that's translated into faith from the Greek is the word pistis, which Dominic Dance ironically refers to herself as an uh, a pistivist, lol. When pistis is trust of an authority, but furthermore, when you get into the definition, it's the trust on, on um, authority that has proved themselves. And how does an authority prove itself? You need to evidence that the authority is trustworthy. Um, it, it's, uh, honestly, you have, it, oh, this is the fact that if you did an ounce of research into the um, con- <laughs> contextual world that the New Testament was written in, then you'd know this. It's, oh, it's just frustrating to hear people comp- not understand what faith is, because when they say that when the uh, New Testament writers use the word faith, they're saying we trust the authority of, um, of say, uh, say God, because because we have evidence. Well, what they believe the evidence. I mean, obviously, you could say, well, that you could disagree that the evidence uh, supports um, thing, but that's not. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm just. I've, I've lost my train of thought. <laughs> I, I think I know where you were going to go next. Welcome um, to my world. <laughs> um, you know, as an atheist, obviously, I doubt certain historical claims, certain claims to reality. Um, but what I don't think Esplan gets is that doubt or skepticism is not the same thing as disproof. Sure, there are reasons to, you know, doubt the validity of something. There are reasons to possibly even, you know, um, you know, say, uh, well, this here doesn't follow or this doesn't make enough sense to me, or this isn't, you know, enough evidence for me to presuppose that X, Y, or Z actually happen, exists, whatever have you, whatever claim you're talking about. But that's not tantamount to disproof. And whatever conclusion I come out of from my doubt or skepticism, I still admit that there is a possibility that my doubt or skepticism is ill-placed. I could still be very wrong. Exactly, and that's where we're coming from when we're talking about... Some, and, what was that, Daniel? Uh, I was just saying how, like, even if you disagree with Christianity, there is still evidence available to be analysed, whether it be uh, the New Testament documents. I mean, that counts as evidence. It may be invalid evidence, but it's still evidence. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you. Mm-hmm. Right. right. I mean, you, you can argue about the quality of that evidence all day, but yeah. the fact of the matter yeah. is that evidence has still been positive. That's what there's evidence That's what we have of God's good criticism. But the soundness of that evidence is called into question. Right. That's why we have tech criticism to analyze the validity of ancient documents like the New Testament. <laughs> mm-hmm. And that's why we have exegesis when it comes to, uh, when it comes yeah. to Scripture. It's a, yeah, criti- exactly. it's a critical uh, study of Scripture. I mean, when you read, um, even like, um, if you read the Chicago Statement of, um, of uh, Biblical Inerrancy, they maintain that you need to study, like, uh, history and the relevant context, and they're inerrantists. <laughs> even if you agree uh, with inerrancy, that's still a valid point, you know? 
Right. See, they believe that scripture is inerrant, is inerrant, but they still maintain it's subject to scrutiny and, uh, by taking into account extra biblical evidence. <laughs> All right. Daniel's, Daniel's made the point that you know he's misusing the way the word is used in the New Testament, and that's that's quite right and valid and needs making. But there's also another point here, and and that is that Christian theologians over the last two thousand years have not define Christian faith just as revealed knowledge. So a anybody who's done any systematic theology knows that immediately in the first year of doing systematic theology, you learn that there are two types. One is special revelation, one is they're called general revelation. Special revelation refers to revealed knowledge directly or very close to directly from God, whereas general revelation is based on the world and things that you can, you know, you could base it around anything that's common knowledge. So this this is a, a terrible misrepresentation of where most theologians have been. Mm -hmm. yeah, this is something I've mentioned before, uh, where like um, it's the, there's natural theology, and then there's uh, what's the word uh, revealed theology. Yes. All right, I think we're going to get the end then. Unless anyone has any last words on this part. Strippers. Yeah. <laughs> that was funny. Okay, we're going to continue then. Riffy to the original individuals who say they spoke to God. No, that is not belief based on knowledge. Belief based on knowledge is just knowledge. It's just not. I have a book here. This is knowledge. It's an anthropology textbook. If I believe something in this book, oh, okay. I'm not going to call it faith. I'm just going to call it knowing shit. Because I read it in this book, and these things can be demonstrated to be the case. Pause it. In the beginning of this book. What was that, Brendan? Okay. <laughs> oh, all right. I read a I, 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 I it. Let's claim that he talked to God. Okay. When you read an autobi, I mean, not autobiography, a biography, especially a biography from primary sources, a person saying they talked to this person and is writing down what they uh what they said, there is no difference. He's he's equivocating. He, he he's basically not not outrightly saying it, but but implying that a person who claims that he or she has talked to God is is, is making a false uh, a claim. They you know, the and, 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 to back that claim is, up. or is delusional. Yeah, and 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 you, and, you, and you can easily simply say, okay, so you know the um, uh, let me think. Uh, I, I'm trying to think of a of a book that, that from a primary source. Um, uh, dang, I, I don't. Re I read mostly science fiction and fantasy, guys. So, I, uh, oh, um, shoot. Uh, <laughs> help me out here. Okay, Francis Crick by Ooh, Matt Ridley. Great. Yeah, I mean, uh, any kind of book that we have in any of our libraries or bookstores that is written from a primary source, you can simply say the same thing using his argument, that this person didn't really talk to that person, that, that they were just delusional, or, or, or you know, or, or, they, or they, they, they were lying, you know? <coughs> I also <coughs> noticed another hint of the uh, genetic fallacy again. It's like, you know, the claims in your book are bullshit because it's your book, but my book right here, I can just believe this and call it knowing shit. Uh, well, exactly. he goes into a little bit more detail uh, about this analogy that he's making, so I suggest that you guys let him just finish All right. uh, making okay, let's, this let's one point. Yeah. Alright, let's finish then. The individual said that this book is made up of many authors, and all of them learn this knowledge by meditating. Then I have a problem then I can no longer call that knowledge because it's contingent on something called revealed knowledge. And that is faith. Faith is not knowledge or belief based on knowledge. Faith is belief based on revealed knowledge or in spite or regardless of the evidence. Okay, can you stop right. that there? Second yeah. What was that? Okay, this can I just say that this is horrible on so many different levels. I can't yeah, yeah. begin. W one one thing to say is that his book on anthropology.
he hasn't read very much anthropology, if he thinks that reading an anthropology textbook gives him direct knowledge, that's one thing. But the other thing that he's trying to suggest is that his book on anthropology is superior to, say, for example, the New Testament documents, because it has some empirical basis. Now, this is another misrepresentation, because if that were true, then there'd be no New Testament scholars doing any work in the field of archaeology. Now, if I can just name drop one, Peter Williams at Tyndale House in this country has done a huge amount of work on the textual documents and archaeology to see if that actually something like the Acts of the Apostles uh, actually lines up with the archaeological evidence. And there's very good news for the Acts of the Apostles, it has to be said. But, I mean, there are so many problems with where he's going here. Those are just two, and it, it's just, it's a car wreck. Yeah, I mean, he obviously has never he obviously has never read any books that discuss uh, that discuss the preponderance of evidence, you know, in in, in the uh, New Testament alone, you know, and yeah. he, he's basically just he what's the way? it's just a really flimsy argument that he's giving, you know, about about scripture versus other other books, you know. It still goes back to the whole deal with him saying he's basically, you know, implying that that, that this, the Bible is written by people who just sat around and meditated. I mean, I'd love to know where he gets that from. Yes, yeah, someone. I don't mean up. I, I don't know if you want to address this, but uh, I'd like to uh, ask if um, you guys already addressed the issue of knowledge. He. he uh, says revealed knowledge and this is normal knowledge and then he qualifies that knowledge with uh, excuse my friends shit uh, <laughs> actually he says uh, by knowing shit so I assume that um, revealed knowledge is not um, knowledge in the way that he he tries to argue I'm not trying to be funny uh, uh, at all but, um, the, the, I'd like to learn talk on can I talk now? Sorry, no, I was just saying that, that in Lane Craig, he notes the difference between um, personal revelation to yourself and uh, um, obviously uh, arguments. The, the purpose of, say, uh, revealed, uh, say, revealed knowledge or, or, or what um, is referred to as the conviction of the Holy Spirit, that is considered necessary warrant for yourself to believe. Uh, it's insufficient to say persuade someone else. Exactly. Whereas, whereas uh, to persuade someone else, you would need um, uh, evidence, external evidence. Uh, well, I, I don't. I don't think we can DNA say the word, the word evidence because um, it seems to me that Asplin's um, idea about knowledge has to do with empirical evidence and. Um, I, I would. He could have just. He could have used a book on mathematics to make his own point, but that that would show that it's not simply empirical evidence that will convince him of any knowledge. Yeah. Though I do assume that he believes that one plus one equals two, and that is pretty sound knowledge. Well, I would like to ask Espen um, if he does believe that he can only uh, prove something using empirical evidence. Does um, did he come to that belief? through empirical evidence. Right. Because, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that, that, that was the point I was trying to get to. Uh, Alright. And let's finish this well, video. Alright, I think we would spent enough time at this point. Let's just finish this video off and take a Sorry. 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 <laughs> Did she just give us your social security <laughs> number? <laughs> you got the that. You got the lead, Jacob. <laughs> That's <laughs> dog job, you. Dar, you're 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 cutting that out. All right. What? She didn't say any numbers. <laughs> Don't cut it out, please. She didn't say any numbers. <laughs> all right. No, 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 no. Cut it out, please. Yeah, we're we, we're gonna cut. Yeah, it. yeah, yeah. Of course. But of at course. the end. I'm just joking. Uh, just I'm just Jacob. You know I love you. We know we love you too. No <laughs> fun. <I> just... <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. All right. So, what was I saying? Um.
we're gonna finish we're gonna finish this video off, then comment on it, then take a break, then go on the video the last video after this. Finish. Let's say let's get rid of the in spite or regardless of it. Let's say it's just a knowledge thing. I'm telling you, nah, -uh, that's not what faith is. You can define it as that, but you're wrong. That's not what you're doing. I'm saying that the thing you're doing is not that. It is belief based on revealed knowledge that is untestable, unverifiable, and unreliable. Even if you consider, if I consider my grandmother's opinion about nuclear fusion reliable, that doesn't make it reliable. That just makes me extremely credulous. That's all. Okay, this video is running a little long, so, um... Okay, that's the end of that video. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's clear um, that he just doesn't know what belief is. So yeah, I mean, th that what? is not even the, the definition of faith. It's like he's going by his own little... It's like yeah, he has a big dictionary of my mind, you know? Mm -hmm. it seems to be living in his own magical world where words mean whatever uh, he, he wants them to be. <laughs> exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, we're going to take a quick break here because I got used to the restroom, okay? Well, okay. Alright, because after, after, when I come back, we're going to go back, go to the last video after this one. Awesome. Alright, does anybody have anything else to say about this particular video? Uh, we're still recording? Cut. Yes, we're still recording. Boobs. Cut. Oh, Vagina. you... You Bye. men are Bye. so mature, you know. I just like the good old-fashioned like old Does anybody have boobs. something intellectual to say about this video? <laughs> Such Ampula mature men. I swear. <laughs> Keep this in. Me is a good thing because you don't wish it finished. Okay, so I will take that as a no. It's a it's a it's a fail burger to his wrong sandwich. <laughs> All right. So nobody has anything to say. Oh, Anthony left. Okay, I'm stopping.